sequence Y, anything but with Kumari Silva, the beautiful Mervyn Peak Hotel here in Colombo. Uh, we talk to my guest uh, Brian Kirkhoven now. Brian Kirkhoven, the uh, the model and the fashion designer. Uh, excuse me, you're on the show. Oh, Come. Hi. Brian, take us to those hard old days of many years ago when you were a model. There was no photoshopping and there were no filters. There was a lot of things that don't happen now. We didn't even have trainers to train us how to model or how to pose for a photograph. We didn't have anything. Okay. But we did it all on our own. We learned on our own by making mistakes and by watching others who were better models than us, who were senior to us, okay. who became not so better than us after that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cat in you know. Okay. <laughs> so, what were the fashion shows like at that time without all this electronic gadgetry well, actually, and all these computers that we have now? I think then uh, it was more creative. The choreographers did a lot of creative work with it. It was more like a show than a fashion show. It was really exciting, like people like Sena Kadi Silva, and then they did really creative work. Beautiful. The sets were beautiful, the costumes were nice. It was really nice. It was totally different to what it is now. So, do you regret your days as a model? No. Now I you're don't. an old man, you're grey. <laughs> Excuse me. You, you're grey <laughs> and your stomach has, you know, come out just like mine. Which stomach? So, do you, <laughs> do you regret those good old days? You're, you're not a, a model anymore. I will sometimes when I watch yeah, the younger models on the ramp and I'm thinking, damn, I could have done a better job than them. Okay. Only thing is I've got these little wrinkles around my eyes. Little wrinkles? You're being very kind to yourself, Excuse Brad. Excuse me. Put the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought I was the cat. <laughs> I think you've eaten a bit of my food. I, I have to match it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you as a fashion designer, how practical are your clothes? Well, actually, it depends on... If you're doing a fashion show, sometimes you have to be a little out of the box and creative. But I prefer to keep it wearable because, see, uh, you are coming, sometimes the ladies or gents who come to watch the show, they want to buy something. Sure. They want to be able to wear what's being showcased. Sometimes we go over the top and ruin everything for it. Inspiration comes from where? Mostly from the people who I, now if I'm looking at you, I will think of what will suit you. <clears throat> Your personality, the way you work and things like that. So a lot of things come from the inspiration from the person itself. Or if I'm just doing a range, it might come from looking at this beautiful flowers and this flowers, if you call them beautiful. They're faded, quite like you are. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> That's so mean. No. I have to buy you a mirror as well. Now, your collection uh, at the runway, uh, runway fashion show recently, the, the, the blue and white Italian style, I thought it was wonderful. Thank you so much. From where did that inspiration come? Well, was it just blue and white in different combinations? Well, what I wanted was something very, very wearable, very, very fresh, very young, and something that could be mixed and matched. Now, any of those pieces, uh, you could take one piece from one outfit and match it with something else. So that, I think, I, I obtained the, the idea behind it all. Why don't you wear your own clothes, apart from wearing Roma 4 clothes, for obvious well, reasons? this is Zara, this is not Roma 4. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, why don't you wear your own clothes? Um, I don't think I have the body for my clothes. Yet. So, comes to I'm my question. I'm working on it So, now. comes to my question. Do, do fashion designer created clothes have to be, have to be worn only on, on, on sculpted bodies? No, not really. If you're doing a ready-to-wear line, of course, yes, you can do it in different sizes, like small, medium, large. And then that should be able to fit any size and look good on anybody. Right? That's the whole purpose. Why do people buy ready-made clothes or even go to a designer? Because they want something special. Sure. Right? So even when you come to me and you say you want something designed for you, I don't take it totally on my head. I will discuss with you like what do you feel comfortable with, what are the colors you prefer, things like that, rather than uh, force you to wear something that I think looks good on you. Because sometimes oh, you won't be comfortable. Exactly. So you actually you let the your customer breathe and you give him space. Yeah. You can see you now something like, like this. There are a lot of men who wouldn't wear something colorful mm. and with so much design. Right? Mm. But I feel comfortable in it. And mm. I know some people who would feel comfortable mm. in it, while others will feel awkward. Okay. So I have to talk to you and see what you would like and what you won't wear and what you will wear. And it's no point you getting this shirt from me and then you put it in your closet. It's not serving your purpose sure. nor mine. Sure. Uh, you work with a lot of models and uh, where would you rank Daniel Kirkhoven? Mm, 
That's a trick question I shouldn't answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only Daniel, but there are a lot of Sri Lankan models who should be on an international platform, but unfortunately they haven't been given that chance. Of Why them. and how? Why? Why is because uh, even I was trying to get in touch with a top model agency abroad and sometimes what their expectations from a model in Sri Lanka is totally different to what we can give. Now Meaning? they are very, very tough about your body structure, your sizes, the walk. They, even now, supposing I'm trying to send you to an agency, they want to have a video clip of how you walk, how you look in swimwear, how you look normally and they don't want pictures of you for fully dolled up with okay, makeup. They okay, the raw this, image. Yeah, very raw image. Okay. So that they can judge you as the real person you are. So I think that's where we fail. We all our portfolios we send out are with heavily made girls and hairstyles and various Talking stuff. of Daniel, I mean apart from the fact that she's your niece, mm -hmm. doesn't she also have the perfectly sculpted body where she's used for fit on for certain garment uh, garment bell on brands made yeah. in this country. She is. So if she has all that why doesn't, why couldn't, why can't she make it big out there? I think um, actually Sri Lanka is a very small industry where fashion is and we have to keep on pushing our people forward like sending them out to international shows and stuff like that which uh, we hardly get a chance. Right? The shows that they go for people say okay there are talent scouts coming in but no talent scouts coming yeah. and I guess the moment this is Sri Lanka people's opinion changes. So Perrine was the only one who made it big? That's because she lived there as well. Ah. <coughs> right? Now, my last question here. Uh, you are Brian Kirk Cohen, uh, and all that you have been. But now, you were also known as Rehana's brother-in-law, but now you are known as Daniel's uncle. So, you are Daniel's uncle and not Brian Kirk Cohen. How does that feel, Mr. Kirk Cohen? Uh... <laughs> For me, the name doesn't bother me because when I was working in the hotels one time, they wanted every the, the um, workers to call the manager sir. Okay. And uh, I realized well, that... you are sidetracking my question. And the answer. <laughs> no, I'm just giving an example. <laughs> okay. So, what I told the staff was, it's no point you calling me sir to my face and bitching me behind my back. Mm. So just call me by my name. So, it really doesn't matter what you are being addressed as, okay. as long as you know who you are. That was a very clever answer, Daniel's <laughs> uncle. I should End be a politician, <laughs> right? <laughs> Please don't. End of sequence Y and the beautiful Mervyn Pick Hotel here. Uh, anything but with Kumari Silva, sponsored by LICC Jeans. And we catch you soon on sequence Z with Brian Cohen, the choreographer and the trainer of models. Thank you. <laughs>